everyone, let me add my own words of welcome to the Temple of Light Love Stream service. A real celebration. And I come to you this morning with a message from the universe to me and for me. But I have the privilege and the honor of sharing it with you. And I start with the words of Charles Simon, spoken from the universe. Freedom is not born in a nation. Freedom is born in people. The seed of freedom is planted in the innermost being of people. Thank you, Charles Simons. This was written in 1965 in an essay on freedom. It is a, in a publication of the World Ministry of Prayer, Science of Mind Foundation, 1965. And Dr. Ernest Holmes, founder of Religious Science and exponent of the Science of Mind philosophy, said the divine plan is one of freedom. The inherent nature of man is ever seeking to express itself in terms of freedom, because freedom is the birthright of every living soul. Freedom are the words that ring out throughout the planet, so tiny, yet belongs to the ages. Many wars have been fought in the name of freedom. Leaders and armies have attempted to extricate themselves from the control of tyrannous forces. Nations have invaded countries and continue to do so under the guise of liberating the inhabitants. Downtrodden groups of persons either stand up to those who would deny them their freedom or flee domination in droves. No matter how many years, how many revolutions, how many mass migrations, how many flights from danger are made. Like the prodigal son, each of us must make the discovery which leads to freedom for oneself. In the words of the Right Honorable Marcus Garvey, National Hero of Jamaica, and the New Thought Apostle, New Thought Apostle, which was immortalized in song by Robert Nestor Murray. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. For the emancipation of our bodies, various interventions have been necessary at each stage in liberation. But true freedom begins and ends in the minds of individuals. For thousands of years, the dominant collective thinking of humanity was that everyone was under the control of outside forces, including the many gods, cosmic malevolent forces, and numerous planetary movements. The one god of monotheism was an upgrade, loving and protective but a controlling and sometimes punitive presence. In the eyes of most cultures, this God had laid down a set of rules for humanity and made it clear that the consequences for breaking them would be punishment. Little was it known that we are not punished for our mistakes, but by them. Time passes. And many mystics and visionaries have brought to each generation the message of freedom. For many, freedom continued to be a distant or impossible dream. Meanwhile, humanity has sown mental seeds of sorrow, sometimes despair, of defiance, resignation, and of hope, which become contending ideas in the 
collective consciousness of the human race. Contending for dominance each. Contending to give birth to a better way of being. Some have led mankind. Some have led mankind to a better way of life. For a while, some have led mankind to rebellion. And some have even resulted in oppression. But all the evidence of a collective consciousness which has lost sight of its true self. But as the Master Jesus said, let the wheat and the tares grow up until the time of harvest. Let the wheat remain lest you see them as useless. They have a purpose to shape the germinating seeds we have deliberately planted. Furthermore, you may not be able to tell the weeds apart from the wheat. How true is it of life? How often do we look back at painful experiences in our lives and say, I didn't choose them, but in overcoming them, I am stronger, wiser, and freer. The same has been true of the human race. The same is true of the formerly enslaved people of the world. Over time, through the lessons of life, a consciousness of bondage has been gradually replaced with a consciousness of freedom. Meanwhile, beneath the threshold of human awareness, the cosmic mind, the one mind, was and is taking the seeds of thought of freedom that has been planted into it by generation upon generation and finding points of expression through which to reveal itself. Gradually cultures and nations awaken to the truth about freedom. Enlightened leaders are born, seekers after the truth discover that they are more than what they appear to be. As more people become aware the collective human spirit becomes more and more restless for change. As every member of a group becomes aware, that person not only benefits themselves personally, but contributes to the awakening of the entire group. If I be lifted up, I will draw all others unto me. Why? Charles Fillmore states this way. A nation is a summation of its individual parts. Our thoughts make up our individual experiences, as well as the collective experience of a nation. Life is consciousness, said Emmett Fox, New Thought Minister and Author. And Dr. Ernest Jones, Holmes, our founder, everything that is seen comes from that which is unseen. When the time has come for change, it will come and nothing can stop it. The tipping point will arrive. The tipping point may come with convulsions manifested as resistance and even rage. Even resistance to inevitable change because inevitable, any resistance to inevitable change is disruptive and necessarily painful if not seen through the eyes of love. No one knows for sure why the universal intelligence designed that the birth of a mammal offspring should be wracked with convulsions and sometimes even pain, maybe more of pain. Giving birth and being born is a significant milestone in the life of a mother and child. Painful for most, protracted for many, but met with a consciousness of eagerness and anticipation of the journey to come. The pandemic which has swept the planet has occurred simultaneously with displays of empathy, compassion, selfless service, mutual support, protestations of love. The one power, the one presence has rescued us. The physical has rescued the physical planet and through the disruptive common experience has forced our oneness 
and our realization of our common humanity, it has forced it to center stage. The spectacle of demonstrations of support for black causes against injustice that has swept throughout every inhabited continent, almost every nation, and numerous global um, icons have lent their voice. Can we doubt that there's a groundswell of awakening? The convulsive nature of these changes have puzzled and worried many. Some have even been euphoric. Some have been amazed. Ah, it may have been even made us forget that this year of our Lord is indeed 2020, year of plenty. Plenty of action, plenty of lessons, plenty of change, and plenty of growth. Knowingly or unknowingly, by our hunger and thirst after righteousness, by our spiritual discipline, by our growing awareness, we have each become midwives to a watershed moment in human history. I am indeed convinced that humanity is awakening to its spiritual magnificence. Yes, I see it, I know it, and I believe it. What I know for sure, and what that humanity is awakening to realize it, that God's spirit indwells every person, that gifts of the spirit are available to all alike, and that we access the gifts by our own beliefs and acceptance of them. Life is conscious. Life indeed is consciousness. I truly believe that there is a divine impulse which, is, which having given mankind its individual freedom will not allow the tipping point of creation to be towards suffering but rather to reveal the nature of the creator. We have been given the tools to discover ourselves, to imagine a creation which serves all sentient beings. It is in discovering the self, the God self, that we contribute actively to the freedom of the human race. It is a journey that our ancestors have traveled for generations. Are you ready to join me in believing that despite the appearance of suffering, that we have come to the tipping point of change? Ponder this in your quiet moments, in your souls. We cannot avoid a journey towards self-discovery. It is the path to freedom. We have all felt the divine urge, although we may misinterpret its message or just choose to ignore it, at least for a while. The divine urge within us is God's way of letting us know that we should push forward and take that which is awaiting our demand. That is actually from the Science of Mind, page 156. The divine urge within us is God's way of letting us know that we should push forward and take that which is awaiting our demand. There is always an opportunity to stop and ask yourself the question, am I using my god given freedom? How am I using it? Is this a way I really, really want to? Is conformity, cultural conditioning, doubt holding me back from responding to the divine urge? When the Creator is ready to move his creation forward, there will be a grown swell of movement that will appear in ways that may seem frightening to many. The biblical scholars remember the 12 plagues. Scientists have arrived at a conclusion that these were a chain of natural phenomena. I believe they were well timed to create a beneficial effect for a group of humans whose collective consciousness had arrived at a critical tipping point. The Maharishi effect establishes that principle that the individual consciousness affects collective consciousness. 
50 scientific research papers have confirmed, have, have confirmed this as a fact. The most recent research to confirm this demonstrated the positive environmental effect of large groups of meditators meditating at the same time. Crime was reduced. All manner of seemingly negative conditions in the human consciousness seemed to respond and be proved as there were communities which felt it in a measurable way. We can prove this for ourselves by regularly emerging ourselves in the silence of our homes. In the workplace, just observe the effect on the environment, on others who share the space. Dear friends, yes indeed, we are living in a time of momentous change from which we cannot be insulated. We are alive at this time on purpose, for a purpose which we cannot escape. If you are alive alone, you are part of this watershed moment in modern history, change that you have contributed to by your own diligent spiritual practice and indeed your spiritual growth. For every time that your heart has swollen with compassion for a stranger, you have received the evidence of your own growth. You are that because you exist, but you have become more aware by your own choice. Indeed, you are assisting in the birthing of a special period. Will we look back on this as the best of times? Will our descendants call us blessed because we used our consciousness to be the midwife of a glorious age of enlightenment? So, we start the practice. In keeping with Reverend John's tradition of giving assignments, I invite you to join me in a daily practice which I know will allow us to consciously contribute in another way to advancing the whole human race. Set aside one minute, one minute twice daily, to be still and imagine a world of loving, caring, happy people living on a pristine, beautiful planet. Then repeat in the silence of your mind, God is all there is. God is everywhere, evenly and equally present. Reverend Mia Wright, co-pastor of the Fountain of Praise Church, in speaking of this period, said, at times like this, we need an anchor. What is our anchor? It is our ability to love, to see past appearances and to know and see the presence of God. As we study, practice, and appreciate the principles of what we call the movement of the truth movement, I share with you, in parting, the promise of our teaching, as described by our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. He said, in answer to the question, what is the goal of the science of mind? Science of mind is a concept of allows us to understand and explore spiritual poetry. The ultimate goal is mastership, where God acts as us. We do not have to prove anything. We do not have to have anything. We do not have to make anything happen. It is a place where we have learned to be our true self. And in the midst of the activity of the world, we live in constant peace and serenity. Such a person, he continues, who has arrived at this state knows that it is not from the study of our teaching, but from the being that true greatness springs. What better consciousness to reach for and to realize in this special time of 2020, year of plenty. Namaste. <laughs>